<clears throat> All right, shalom and welcome. <clears throat> Before I get started, I want to give all praises, honor, and the glory to Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Arakakwadash, and of course, as always, double honors to our apostles and our elders that rule well at Great Millstone. Salutations to all you sincere Akim that are preaching this word in all truth and sincerity. So I'm going to just jump around a little bit right here in Revelation 3. But, um, yeah, so me and the brother are talking right now. A little morning conversation. And the spirit, all right, was incited. Okay, it was sparked to do this lesson based upon a conversation we are having, you know. This is Revelation 3 and 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. You know, the works that we're doing, serving Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, are not in vain. Okay, there is a dire consequence for not serving Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay? It says the Lord He's going to keep us from the hour of temptation. The hour of temptation is when Esau, the so-called white man, the devil, according to the scriptures, is going to push the karagma on the people of the earth. And the karagma is the mark of the beast. Okay, which is a micro CHIP that they are going to mandate all humans to put in your flesh. See, the mark of the beast isn't something you could wear. All right? The mark of the beast isn't sleeping with white women, Edomite women. Okay, the mark of the beast isn't your cell phone. The mark of the beast isn't an embargo. The mark of the beast is a device that they want to put in your flesh. Okay, by means of incision. They actually want to cut it into you. Okay. You know, one of the words within the, uh, you know, Revelation uh, 13 going into the chip, one of the words there is stigma, which goes back to stigmata, okay, which is like a means of incision. You know, when people commit stigmata, you know, they cut themselves, they pierce themselves. So what it really means is, you know, the karagma is to cut into your flesh, man, to cut a device into you. And that is the final test. The word try means to test. Okay. So it says it's going to come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. We're in a test. Okay? You Israelites, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, and of course Israelite foreigners. Israelites that look like other nations. Okay? 
But it's also going to come upon the heathen as well. But it's to try us. All right, to hell with these damn heathen. But the Lord is saying, look, and this is red letter, it's Yahweh Shai, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. He's saying, look, because you kept your faith, you continued in my love, I'm going to keep you from that. I'm going to protect you from receiving, from taking that mark, from getting the chip. Because if you read Revelation chapter 14, it goes into what is going to take place to those that take the chip. Okay, to cut it short to the point, if you take the chip, you're going to die a grievous death. All right? A very, very terrifying, painful death. Okay? This is Revelation 3 and 11. Behold, I come quickly. The Lord, he's on his way. All right? It's not going to be 10 years from now. Yeah, I was shy. Ratzah, it is not ten years from now. Yahweh Shai Ratzah, it is in five years from now. Yahweh Shai Ratzah, it is within these next couple months, man. You know, Yahweh Shai Ratzah, you know, the next Passover, we're in a chariot, man. Because the Lord, he's on his way. It says, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. There's nothing you can take with you into the kingdom. You're not taking this body. We're going to get new bodies. Okay, so what should you be holding fast to is your faith, your belief in Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. Ba'ashem Arakakwadash. That no man take thy crown. That you're not stripped of your salvation, man. It says that no man take thy crown. Not your brother, not your uncle, not your best friend, okay? Not your woman, okay? Not your father, your parents. Shoot, not yourself, man. Right now, a lot of brothers is talking about and going into doubt. The scriptures say not to doubt. It's already been written. Okay, we're just playing out our role in the movie. Okay. It says, him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my power. You're going to be a factor. You're going to rule. Okay. You're going to be a pillar in the temple. All right. You're going to be part of that royal assembly, man. Forever. You're going to be an eternal excellency. You know, that is... That is the greatest gift. That is the greatest position to be in. Is to reign with Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Not just being a Israelite that dies and comes back. Man. You're going to be an Israelite. The first fruits. Okay. To be the elect the highest standard you're going to have a say in everything okay Yahweh Shai is going to be there you're going to be there all in order in unison deciding everything that takes place remember the scripture says and paraphrasing you know paraphrasing but it says, we shall see as him. 
we shall see as them. Our eye, our mind is going to be in complete unison with Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. They're going to tell us things. And we're going to be right there in complete unison. Like as if their thought was our thought. Because their thoughts are, are going to be our thoughts. We're going to be perfect. It says, and he shall go no more out. What that means is, you know, we're, we're not going to have to do anything that we don't want to do. We're not going to go off. We're not going to be stripped of our heritage anymore. Okay? We're never going to bug out again. And I will write upon him the name of my power and the name of the city of my power, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my power. And I will write upon him my new name. We're going to be sealed, man, with all authority. Okay. Now this is the point in verse 15 on down. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So what the Lord is demanding of us is if you come to the understanding of these scriptures, you know the names, you hear the names, you see the brothers preaching. So what the Lord is saying is this is the way. You're either going to come this way or don't fucking come this way at all. Okay? You got to be all hands in. Okay? Both feet in the door. You can't have one foot in the door and one foot out. You got to be all for this. 144% in this to win this. If not, if not, go fucking follow IUIC. Okay? If you just want to be part of a big group with a whole bunch of women and these little celebrity Israelites living a fairy tale, go be in IUIC. You know? Go join the Sakari. If you want that fucking glamour. Okay, because when you serve Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you got to prepare your heart for temptations, man. You got to prepare to suffer, man. Okay? You got to be willing to lose, to sacrifice. All right? And to enter into the kingdom is a narrow path. It's a straight gate, a path of difficulty. This ain't easy. Okay. But adversity, all right, difficult situations are intended for tough men. Okay, for strong willed men. Okay. If you want to be a. <laughs> If you want to be one of those happy, festive Israelites, join the fucking IUIC. All right? Go, go do what them bug outs do. Okay? Because when Yahweh Shai was on the scene, Yahweh Shai was a man of sorrows. All right, we go through a lot of shit. Okay? But you know what? We were appointed that. Okay? We were appointed to catch hell. It's just the truth. And Yahweh Shai is saying, look, accept it and do what's commanded of you. Feed my lambs. Okay? We need to be on fire. We need to be hot. 
When you're alive, you're warm. Your spirit's fire. When you die, your spirit leaves. You become cold. So if you want to live, then live in your Shai. If you want to die, live after this world. Live after, live after Satan. This is verse 16. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. So Yahweh Shai is saying, look, if you believe me, okay, if you intend to serve me, serve me. Be on fire. Now, being on fire doesn't mean that you got to do a hundred videos a week. It doesn't mean you got to have multiple camp street teachings a week. That's not what he means by being on fire. Okay, being on fire, all right, is you, of course, doing your lessons, being at the camp every week, but also, you know, believing, staying alive in the spirit, okay, not going off willingly, willfully, okay, Going off willfully, that's you being lukewarm. That's you being cold, man. Okay? Or you're in this, but you're going off. You're in this, but you're taking it lightly. That's you being lukewarm. You know you should be doing a lesson. The, 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 your conscious, which is your spirit, is nudging you to do lessons, to do something spiritual, and you're brushing it off as if it's Satan. That's you being lukewarm, man. Okay. The Lord is saying, look, be on fire or just, just get the fuck, you know, fuck off. Now, if you're in this, don't be lukewarm. Okay. Or else he's going to spew you out of his mouth and he can get rid of you, bug you out, give you a different name. We had a member in our group, and um, his Hebrew name that we gave him was Rapa Allah, okay, which means uh, healer of the Most High, or the healer of the power, okay, which is Raphael, one of the angels. Raphael is an angel that deals with healing. So we named him Rapa Allah, Raphael. But in English, there's a word Ralph. And I believe it was the brother Asma Wath in Fresno that started calling him Ralph. And I never really liked to call him Ralph. Okay, I never really liked to call brothers uh, by a short version of their Hebrew name. But the Lord put him to death. The Lord smoked him because he was being lukewarm. He was going to camp. He was doing lessons. They were little shitty lessons. You know, he wasn't giving his might. And um, he's probably drunk the whole time. He's doing them. But that's neither here nor there. He was being lukewarm when it came to keeping his temple and serving the Lord. The Lord will kill you for ruining your temple, man, for not taking care of yourself. The scriptures talk about if you're polluting the temple, which is the, your body, to the temple of the Lord, you know, it's a temple for your spirit that the Lord gave you. If you're, if you're just abusing it constantly, the Lord will kill you, man. That's what the Lord did to that guy. Now, the scripture said the Lord will spew you out of his mouth. All right? Going back to the word Ralph, it, it's, it's, it's highly spiritual. That brother started calling him Ralph. Now, when the Lord smoked him, the spirit had me look up what Ralph means. And the name Ralph 
means vomit. <laughs> so the Lord threw his ass up, man. The Lord vomited him up. Okay, this is not a joke. All right. This is serious business. This is the truth. And nothing but the truth. There is no other truth. There is no other God. All right. So, you know, be on fire to the best of your ability. The Lord is going to kill you over petty mistakes. The Lord isn't going to kill you if you, you know, missed a day. But if you denounce Yahweh Hashem Shai, if you just stop caring, stop doing what's required of you, then fear. Because Yahweh Hashem Shai will destroy you for being lukewarm. He will spew you out of his mouth. So with that, I want to give all praises, honor, and the glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Harakakwadash. And of course, as always, double honors to our apostles and our elders that rule well at Great Millstone. Salutations to all you sincere Akim, Wa Akwathim. Till next time, Shalom.